Hi friends, uh, in this video we'll be talking about the analysis of the quant section for RBI grade B examination. So quant plus DI is one of the sections in the phase 1 uh, of RBI grade B examination and this video will be dealing with that particular section. So we'll be discussing the following points in this video. Uh, first of all we'll be talking about the overall breakup of phase 1 examination. We'll then we'll be talking about the number of questions from each topic in quant plus di. Then we'll be talking about the type of questions. So here we'll be talking about the topic and here we'll be talking about the type of questions from that particular topic. Then the next thing that is relevant or important is that how the previous year papers were different from the 2016 paper. Right, so we have carried out an analysis topic wise and we'll be talking in detail about how the previous year papers prior to 2016 were different from the examination held in 2016. Then we'll be talking about major insights and strategies and then the study technique for dealing with quant plus DI section of phase 1. A uh, word of caution, these, uh, this analysis is based on, uh, is based on memory. Since the questions uh, are not released by RBI and we don't get a hard copy of the examination, so we have uh, made this analysis based on memory based questions, right? So this is the overall breakup of phase 1 examination. Uh, there are a total of 200 questions worth 200 marks. 80 marks is devoted to general awareness section. 60 marks uh, is devoted to the reasoning section. 30 marks to the English section and again 30 marks to the quant plus DI section in phase 1. So this was the breakup of the quant plus DI section in 2016. Right, 2016. So there were two caselets on DI of 10 marks, 5 questions each. Right, so two caselets on DI, 5 questions on the first caselet and the 5 questions on the second caselet. Again there were 5 questions on data sufficiency. There were 5 questions on series and patterns, number series and patterns. One question each on all of these topics. So the topics can be mixtures, ratios and proportions, percentages, simple interest and compound interest, averages, profit and loss, time and work, speed, distance and time, boats and streams, races, geometry and mensuration. So one question on all these general topics of quant. Right. So the total number of questions becomes 30. Worth 30 marks again. So let us pick up one topic uh, that is data interpretation. So in 2016, as I have already told, there were two sets of data interpretation. There were two caselets. One caselet was based on a pie chart and the second caselet was based on tabular data. Now uh, you have to remember that calculations can be very lengthy in some questions. See the uh, secret for success in uh, RBA grade B phase 1 examination is that you have to pick and choose. You don't have to attempt the questions in order. Right. There can be uh, a few questions in which the calculations can be very lengthy and if you st uh, are stuck with such a question, you can end up wasting a lot of your time. Right. So you have to pick and choose. So let us take an example of data interpretation for pie chart. Uh, you can read this question. This is an example of a question based on pie chart. So uh, there, these are the various costs which a company is incurring on publishing a book royalty 15%, binding 20%. If for a certain quantity of books, the publisher has to pay 30,600 as printing cost, then what will be the amount of royalty to be paid by these books? Right. So you have to calculate the amount of royalty to be paid for these books. So this is a type of question based on pie chart. This is a type of question of DI based on tabular data. Right, so you have to study the following table and then you have to answer the question that follows. So this is again a question on DI based on tabular data. So we are giving an example of a question here. So you can read this question. Then there were five questions uh, worth one mark each. That's a total of five marks on data sufficiency. Now in such type of questions you have to uh, select the option based on these two statements. Now the question is that in which year was Rahul born? If you think that 1 alone is sufficient, while the statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer this question, you have to tick A. And similarly, B, C, D, E, depending on whether 2 alone is sufficient, while 1 alone is not sufficient, either 1 or 2 is sufficient, neither or both 
are sufficient so you have to take the right option based on these two statements and you have to answer this question this is the type of question on data sufficiency last year there were five questions on this topic then there were five questions on series and patterns so a particular series is given to you and you have to identify which of the following numbers is wrong in the series right so there's a set pattern so you have to practice questions based on this series and patterns as well so last year there were five questions on this now there were 10 questions in total on a number of topics one question each one question on ratio one question on percentages as i have told earlier one question on SICI, average, profit loss, time and work, speed and distance, boats and streams, races and mensuration. So all these topics are again important and there were there was one question each on each of these topics last year. Now let us discuss the breakup of quant section for 2015. For 2015. So in 2015 there were three caselets for DI. 15 questions out of 30 were based on three caselets of DI. Five questions each. There are five questions on number series. Again, one question each on all these topics, season topics, profit and loss average, SICI and so on. So what was different? Uh, that there was there was a DI caselet on missing data. In the next slide, we'll be talking about what is missing data. And there was a question on probability and there's a question on age as well. So this is a type of question on missing data. In this type of question, there is a caselet that is given and there is missing data within the caselet. You can see the dash here. So it, the key to solve such kind of question is that first of all, you have to uh, find the missing values. Then you have to answer the question that follows. Right. So uh, in this slide, we'll be talking about that what was different in the uh, examinations that were conducted prior to 2015 before 2015 right so there was there used to be a di set based on radar graph now we'll be talking about this also that what is the radar graph and all and there used to be questions on quadratic equations and inequalities now since 2015 these topics have not been asked but prior to 2015 these topics used to be important and relevant quadratic equations and inequalities now this is an example of a radar graph this this is what a radar graph looks like number of mobile phones manufactured in thousand by six different companies in the years 2001 and 2002 Sony, HTC, Nokia, Micromax, Samsung, Apple blue is 2001 and the red is 2002 right so you can read this graph and you can find the values quadratic equations and inequality this is a type of question that can be asked or that was asked prior to 2015 and since the last two years such questions have not been asked but again you have to prepare these topics as well coming to the strategy now since quant carries 30 marks and the questions of quant can be quite time consuming so you have to uh, plan accordingly you don't have to spend more than again 25 to 30 minutes on this section see you have to start with the GA section and then you have to uh, come to the English section and you have to uh, then come to quant or reasoning depending on your forte so first after solving the questions of GA and English you can start with quant and you don't have to spend more than 25 to 30 minutes on this uh, on this part and you have to aim at a score of 12 to 14 marks see the sectional cutoff for quant is relatively low as compared to other sections so you have to focus on getting around 12 to 14 marks out of 30 marks in the quant section again as I told earlier you have to pick and choose you don't have to solve all the questions you don't have to you have to pick and choose you have to identify your strengths and you have to solve accordingly pick the question accordingly a word of caution you don't have to devote too much time on quant you don't have to devote too much time on a particular question as well if you're not able to solve a particular question you have to move ahead leave that question move ahead see you have to clear the sectional cutoff you don't have to solve all the questions i'm repeatedly telling you that you don't have to attempt the questions in order you have to identify which question are you are comfortable with what is your strong area and you have to attempt those questions first selective approach based on your strengths you have to aim for accuracy over quantity see in quant accuracy can be very very high so you have to aim for accuracy you don't have to solve all the questions you don't aim for quantity aim for accuracy now the study technique for quant should be that you have to identify your strong areas and how would you do that by attempting tests in real time environment so once you attempt a few tests at least 10 tests you will be able to identify your strong areas as well as your weak areas you have to improve your weak areas don't leave your weak areas 
you have to improve your weak areas and you have to make your strong areas even more stronger an ideal test series or an ideal test should contain a variety of questions on each topic it should be uh, a test series that should contain different difficulty level questions and proper explanations are a must because uh, these through these explanations you will be able to uh, identify your weak areas and you will be able to uh, grab the concepts right so your topic wise analysis and explanations are a must in a test series what edutype has to offer we are launching a test series very soon for phase 1 in a couple of days we'll be launching the phase 1 test series and i would also like to take a moment to discuss the uh, edutap application for android you can download the edutap app from google play store and you can read anytime anywhere on the go right so all our courses work on application as well if you have any query you can drop us a mail at dunofi@gmail.com or crackrb@gmail.com you can choose any one email id or you can also call us at 8146207241 we would be glad to assist you so that's all from my side thank you so much